Hey, welcome back to Tony Tone Barbecue. This is going to be part two on my series of Oklahoma Joe's Judge Charcoal Grill. Today we're going to be talking about curing and seasoning this brand new charcoal grill. Before we get into that, just a quick reminder, uh, remember this channel is about real at-home barbecue. I demonstrate the same exact type of barbecue that you can do in your own home, in your own backyard, using the same type of tools that you can get from your local hardware store or any other online retailer. And uh, I like to keep it simple and, and uh, yeah, be direct. So with that, we're going to get rolling here. The other thing I wanted to mention real quick. If you've watched part one of this series, there's a couple things I want to point out. If you haven't watched part one yet, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and go back and check it out. So here's what I want to point out. One, I did uh, put notes in the video that I installed this exhaust on the wrong side. I accidentally put this part, the flange here, mounted that on top of the lid right here, instead of inserting it through the hole here, which actually can be done at when I first looked at it. I didn't think it could be done that way because of this. So I assumed it went on top. That's what happens when you don't read, when you don't read the instructions. But uh, since then, I corrected that, wanted to make sure you saw that, see what it looks like. The other thing is that I noticed in the video when I looked back at it, that there was a lot of these white marks. And I wanted to make sure and point out that those aren't any type of damage to the charcoal grill. All that is, is where the styrofoam was resting against the box here and uh, rubbing on it when it was, you know, packaged it up and shipped and moving around the world. That stuff actually wipes right off and leaves no mark whatsoever. This is just a damp microfiber towel. And it had those markings kind of all the way around and I made sure to wipe all that clean it left no marks whatsoever. So really, this thing came perfect out of the box. All right, let's talk curing and seasoning. You might be asking, what is it? Why do we do it? Well, these things are made out of metal and in the manufacturing process, okay, we've got raw metal and then we've also got coating on this metal that protect it from rusting out during shipping before you ever get a chance to use it. If you look at it carefully, you can even kind of see where there's oils and stuff that have, that are kind of on here and drip down. You can see the drip lines. You can even kind of touch it. it. Even feels a little bit sticky in some places. Okay. Well, all that stuff needs to basically burn off. That's why I usually call it a burn off before you use it. Because if you don't and you just start cooking in this, when you do your first cook, that stuff is going to burn off then. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get fumes and smoke that develop and that stuff is going to end up on your food and then you're going to be tasting that on whatever you cook and then you're going to be thinking, geez, I don't like barbecuing because it tastes like metal and weird oils. Okay, that's not what should happen. If you do this properly, you're not going to have any problems like with that. Not only are you going to get rid of the manufacturer stuff that's on here and burn that off, but you're also going to be leaving behind a coating that's going to protect the inside of all this metal and help prevent it from rusting. And if you maintain it and do this on a regular basis, you're not going to have a, a rusting problem. This is metal. If you've ever gotten metal hot and then left it out in, this, in the winter, in the, in the elements, it will start to rust pretty quickly. So. Here's what you do. We're going to follow the manufacturer instructions uh, really to a T. One thing that we need to do, these, these grates here are made out of cast iron. Cast iron is notorious for, for rusting right away. So I'm going to take these inside here and I'm going to wash them per manufacturer instructions, a little soapy water to remove the, the wax coating that's put on these from the manufacturer to protect them from rusting. That's why they're not all rusty right now. So I'm gonna take these out and set these aside. Okay, the other thing the instruction says that we need to do is we need to brush vegetable oil on all of the interior surfaces of this. That's a little bit of a pain in the ass and I've done it before. It's doable. You can put it on a paper towel or on a, on a cloth rag. You can use a brush. You can just spread it all around, that's fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up some uh, peanut oil in a bottle, put it in a spray bottle, and I'm gonna attempt to spray it all over the inside just to make the process a little more even, a little quicker. 
uh, you can coat it however you want. But the instructions say to coat all the interior surfaces with vegetable oil of some sort. Peanut oil is a type of vegetable oil. I prefer peanut oil because it's got a really high smoke point and it leaves behind a fantastic coating on the metal surfaces. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Okay, I got my vegetable oil here ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying liberally all over the inside of this thing, making sure to get below the charcoal grate and everything, make sure to get a really good coating on everything, and I wanna remind you, if you end up uh, spraying in areas where you weren't intending, I mean, don't be afraid to get a little bit messy with this, okay? If you get oil on the outside of this thing and you weren't wanting to, well, the best thing you could do is add some more and rub it in because the oil is only gonna help protect this uh, grill from rusting out and fading over time. Okay, more oil the better. All right, here we go. Okay, here's a close-up of all the oil. Hopefully you can see that this thing is coated very well with vegetable oil all over the inside. So now what I'm gonna do, next step is to build a fire of charcoal inside here. The instructions say to build a fire and to keep the air intake right here, open about 25%, just a little bit, and let the heat start to build slowly. Start off at about a quarter open, and then go to about halfway open a little bit later, doesn't specify how long. So what I'm gonna do, normally I would use my chimney starter to make my to start my charcoal fire, but what I'm gonna do today, is I'm actually just gonna use some watered up paper here. I'm gonna add a little bit more vegetable oil to this watered up paper to make sure it burns nicely. And I'm gonna put some charcoal down right on top of that to get this fire going. So you're gonna see what that looks like here in a second. Okay, I got a nice little pile of Kingsford charcoal in here. Let's go ahead and get that lit up. So while this charcoal is getting going, I'm going to go ahead and take those cast iron grates inside. I'm going to get those washed up. Then with the cast iron grates, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to coat them after you've dried them thoroughly, coat them thoroughly with uh, solid oil, like just a shortening Crisco, whatever. That's what we're going to be putting on that. And then we're going to, once they're completely coated, we're going to be placing them where they belong here in the grill for that to cook off. Okay, the cooking grates have been washed and dried. Now the fun part, gotta grease them up. Some gloves make this portion a lot easier to do. This is uh, Crisco. You can also use a bunch of uh, bacon grease if you've got any of that. But uh, it's time to get messy.
Okay, those are coated nicely. Nice thing about using your hands is uh, you can, a little, a little bit goes a long way. You can really smear it around all over the place. Just make sure you throw something down to protect your working surface, make it a lot easier for a cleanup later. Okay, as I was washing and greasing up those cooking grates, the charcoal's been catching fire here and we've got a nice little heat source going. Now the instructions say to raise the heat slowly. So I think uh, we've got enough heat in there where I'm gonna go ahead and put those charcoal grates, I mean, sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and put those cooking grates in place where they belong. And I'm going to then close the lid and we're going to let that charcoal continue to light up and burn. And the temperature is going to increase slowly just like it says to do. Okay, the grates are in place. Now all we need to do is let that charcoal burn. Instructions say to let it burn for at least two hours. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna let this burn and um, as the temperature builds, probably gonna be adding some more charcoal in about an hour and uh, we'll let it burn until it all burns away. And then that's it. This thing will be both cured and seasoned and ready for its next cook. Now, another thing we're gonna look at while this is happening is I'm gonna be looking at how much smoke leaks out from anywhere else after I close the lid. So I'm gonna show you that here in a second. Okay, it's only been a minute and the lid is down. The exhaust vent is wide open. You can see plenty of smoke coming out of there. Everything else looks good. The gauge is barely starting to come up, seeing that it's reaching about 150 degrees so far. I'm gonna be watching that. And here's the things we're gonna be looking for. I wanted to know whether or not this thing leaks smoke out of places that I don't want it to leak. Well, so far so good. But I'm gonna do, we're gonna be watching this and I'll give you some close-ups here in a second. We'll see what we have. So I mentioned my concerns about smoke leak. And I gotta tell you, it's really not much of a concern anymore. There was a couple areas that I was concerned about. One was the lid. And as you can see, there doesn't seem to be any smoke coming out of the lid. And I wanna come back to more the, talk more about this whole smoking thing. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit coming out right there. Will I add smoke or gasket to it? I still might, but there's no need to. I can tell you right now, there's no need to. Now, the other area that I was concerned about was on the exhaust stack here. And yeah, I was right. There's a little bit of smoke coming out around the uh, bottom edge of the smokestack. Is that a big deal? No, it's not at all. It's not a big deal at all. And that little tiny bit of smoke leak is super insignificant, especially since when I'm smoking, I keep that portion wide open anyways. Now back to the whole smoking issue. I am definitely not gonna criticize the judge for having a little bit of smoke leak. Why? Because it is a charcoal grill. Now I know that it can be used for smoking. And as a matter of fact, even on the gauge here, it has a range that specifies smoke and then another range for barbecue and another range for grill. But that's not why I got this. I got this because it's a charcoal grill and I'm going to be using it for grilling, primarily grilling. I've used things like this for smoking. Matter of fact, I've even used things like propane grills for smoking and you can do it, it works. 
but when it comes to actually smoking meats for a long period of time, I prefer using an offset smoker. That's what it's built for. It's in the name. It's called offset smoker. And like I said, I've used other things. Nothing comes close to doing the job that an offset smoker can do. And the Oklahoma Joe's offset smokers that they make, I'm sure are fantastic for that purpose of smoking. Can you smoke in the judge? Yes, you can. I've seen it done. I'm going to do it and it'll be fun, but I prefer doing it in an offset. Would this thing work well for smoking? Yes, I'm sure it will, as is without doing any modifications to it. I got to say, this thing, I've been super impressed with it since I started pulling it out of the box and putting it together. So I'm happy with it. And yeah, because I'm so weird and picky, I might throw a little smoker gasket on there just to see what it does. Um, but gosh, it just doesn't need it. But for those of you that want to see it done, make sure you check out my next video on, well, it might not be the next one, but it'll be coming up soon on me applying that stuff. So just so you can see how it's done. I'm going to be doing another video shortly on its first cook. And uh, so we can see how that goes. But uh, stay tuned because at the end of this video, you're going to see how the, uh, how the curing and seasoning turns out. And um, then there might be links or sooner or later, there will be links to the next sets of videos in this series. Okay, we've reached 300 degrees, so I thought I'd give you an update. Let's just see how things are going. Everything's looking good on the outside. There's no smoke pouring out anywhere inside. It's hot in there. The oil that I sprayed everywhere has really started to just uh, liquefy and spread out even more where it was kind of beady before as the metal surfaces are getting nice and hot. It's just really coating everything nicely. And the fire down below is burning nicely. And I'm gonna keep letting that fire grow. I'm gonna close the lid again. Now, one of the cool things, and one of the main reasons why I decided to get this Oklahoma Joe, the judge here, is this door right here. All I gotta do is poke that lever up there and look at that. There's the charcoal. I freaking love that and I'll tell you why. If you're into doing some longer cooks or some complex cooks where you're using your grill for you know two, three hours cooking different things, maybe having some ribs on there and then moving to chicken and then doing some steak and you're doing a big feast, well sometimes your coals start to peter out before all your food is done. I hate, I hate having to grab that grill full of food and moving it off of my grill to throw more charcoal down in there. I wanted this because if I need to add more fuel to the fire, I can just open up this door and put it right in there. As a matter of fact, I even got this handy little tool, this rake for moving the uh, coal around that was recommended when I bought this thing off of the Home Depot website. And um, that thing's going to be super handy. So I'm going to open up that door in a little bit and throw some more fuel in there. Okay, this is the cool little tool that I picked up that's uh, from Oklahoma Joe. It's a scrubber combo. You just pop this off somehow. Oh, there's a button. Take the scrubber off. And then you've got this cool little scraper here. So you can rearrange, shove that back a little bit. That works pretty nice. All right, let's throw some more coal in there. Okay, that looks good. Okay, ready for another update. Temperature's way up. We are at about 425 degrees. 
everything is looking really good. Man, the surface is just hot, 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 hot. And it's just doing great. Uh, let's have a look inside here. So I really like that door. That is something that just drives me crazy how awesome it is. I like using my, my old barbecue tongs here, my coal tongs for actually grabbing coal and moving it wherever in there I want it to be. That's just so, so convenient that I can move the heat around and add wood or lump coal or charcoal wherever I want it. Love that. I have a look inside. Inside is looking nice. You see that the color change on those cooking grates, that cast iron has really burnt up nicely, letting that uh, fat from that shortening really just bond to the surface. And you can see here, uh, maybe it might be kind of hard to tell in the video, but I can tell here in person looking at it that all that oil that was up there on that lid, well, it's still a little wet and still up there, but it looks really thick. It's really drying out. It's really starting to adhere to the surface. And you can see, if you remember, it was very silvery looking before, but now it's got this bronze look to it. And that's what we're going for. All that oil just burning all over on and adhering to the surface of this grill is going to just really cure and season it, which means it's going to be protected. And when I actually do a cook in this, everything's going to come out looking great. So we're getting close to being done with this process. And really that's all that needs to be done to prepare this thing to cook. And um, like I said, I might, I might do those mods later, just a little bit of sealant here and there. But as you can see, just by looking at it, it doesn't really need that. And it's working fantastic. This thing is awesome. I'm loving it. I cannot wait to cook in it. Stay tuned. I'm just going to show you the finishing touches here when that charcoal is burnt down to nothing. And then you'll be uh, able to see if there's a video for you to click on. And uh, so you can see the next step, which is going to be a cook. And I've got some things planned on it here. My first cook is going to be uh, probably four different things that I'm putting on there, plus some veggies. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm talking maybe a rack of pork ribs, some chicken, some steak, some shrimp, little everything. I want to have some fun. And uh, so if you see a link to that video at the end of this video, then just click on that. You'll see it. If not, make sure you subscribe so that way you can see it when I do post it, which will be in just a few days. Okay, over 475 degrees, almost 500 degrees, and the judge is performing perfectly. No issues, looking good inside. All that oil that I've applied is pretty much dried up now. The grates are looking really great. Hat. Everything is looking awesome. I'm happy. I'm just going to let this burn down now. And that is it. Really, that's it. That's how you cure and season a charcoal grill or offset smoke or anything else. And uh, nothing to it. So all I'm going to do now is let this burn down and then cool off. And once it's totally cool, there's a drawer down there that I'm going to pull out. And that's the ash pan. I'm going to pull that out and empty it. And then I'm going to throw my cover over it and um, it's going to be ready for the next cook. Thanks for watching.